In this video, I'll do an overview of how I design and 3D print fully functioning and long lasting windsurf fins for around 20 Australian dollars. Anyone that's into windsurfing knows you quickly accumulate a large amount of gear, including fins. At a price of over $250 for each fin, this can quickly become expensive. A good quality, hassle free 3D printer can now be purchased for under a thousand Australian dollars and even a mini 3D printer costing less than half that can be used by printing the fin in multiple parts. So even starting from scratch you can make nearly unlimited fins for the same cost as a few commercial fins. I got into making fins this way thanks to a guy called Fangman who makes cast aluminium fins called Fangy Fins. Since I was impressed with his fins I got to learn how he made them. After he designs the fins he gets the design 3D printed a sand mould is made and then molten aluminium is poured into the mould. Then much grinding and sanding is required before the fin is ready for use. Fangy mentioned how much he was paying to get his design 3D printed. I mentioned I had a 3D printer and that the cost should not be anywhere near as high as he was paying. So I'd be happy to print his fins for free in order to be involved with the process. I think the first print I made was a Fangy Fin 18 based on a propeller airfoil. He still proceeded to get sand mould made from this print and cast the aluminium fin, which was a costly and time consuming process. In the meantime, I dabbled with a little with CNC fin making, but this was also expensive and time consuming. Fangy continued to push more and more designs my way and all the prints were looking really good, so I thought I'd try to print and use them directly. Initially I tried compression techniques to compress the 3D print or a light covering of fiberglass. These worked okay, however they were still quite complex to make and didn't last that long. It was clear with the number of ideas Fangy was coming up with, coupled with a pile of my own, we needed a much more rapid prototyping method. The breakthrough came after I built my model of Sail Rocket 2. Despite the sail structure being printed in vase mode and only having a thickness of 0.4mm, it was very strong. In addition, the floats were similar, but I had filled them with expanding foam. The resultant structure was extremely strong, far exceeding my expectations. Instead of the complex method of how I made the sail rocket sail, I just used a gyro to infill pattern for fins and then fill them with epoxy. The first fully 3D printed fin that used this process was the fangulator fin, quickly followed by the dual fangulator. Then Fangy started down the variable airfoil fin path and I started playing around with embedding other stuff like electronics and lights with the aim of eventually making adjustable fins. The fins I've mainly concentrated on are the delta style fins. However, the basic concept can be applied to regular fins or wacky annular designs. There are a number of reasons I use delta fins. The main one being the windsurf spots close to me have either shallow sandbars to traverse or thick seaweed or a combination of both. The other reason is the short size of these fins means they can be printed in one piece on many popular 3D printers. However, it is possible to use the tiny mini 3D printers and print the fins in pieces which I've successfully done. It's a good idea to have the trailing edge be made from either 0.5mm or 0.2mm PTG sheet. Whilst this flexible trailing edge may offer some performance improvements, the main reason to do this is for strength, as a 3D print without epoxy in this region is relatively fragile. It also reduces the chance of nasty fin cuts. You can buy a large 2.4m by 1.2m sheet of 0.5mm PTG sheet for around $40. I had a pile lying around after manufacturing large quantities of face masks during the pandemic. You can make your own 0.2mm sheet by cutting a drink bottle lengthwise, roughly bolting it to a flat sheet of wood, then heating it with a hot air gun or hairdryer. I've also tried mylar, which is what sails are made out of, but this is difficult to glue. I use PTG material for the fins as this is cheap, easy to print, flexible and fully recyclable if you make mistakes. It's the same stuff they make drink, drink bottles out of. I use transparent material as this allows you to see the epoxy fill and any air bubbles that may get trapped. You could use other more exotic filaments but these typically require an enclosed or more expensive printer and don't appear to be necessary. The tuttle and the fin are printed separately in order to fit on the printer and not require much, if any, support material. The tuttle and fin pieces are connected in two different ways. 
One way, which I originally started with, is to use a transfer mechanism where a separate threaded rod or two clamps the parts together and the tuttle bolts are standard. The other is to extend the tuttle bolts as deep as possible into the fins. There are pros and cons of each method. Either method relies on nuts embedded in the fin. Some carbon stiffeners can be added depending how stiff you want the fin. I designed the fin in Fusion 360, which is a free CAD program. Of course, there are other free and paid CAD programs that can be used. The tuttle and carbon rod stiffener holes and recesses for the embedded nuts are all put in. The STL file is imported into the slicer, then placed on the print bed and oriented so it fits. The slicer here is bamboo slicer, which is a fork of Prusa slicer, but most slicers are similar. Gyroid infill is selected. This infill means all the pore space is interconnected, allowing the pore space to be filled with epoxy. I use 15% infill, which makes for a fast print and means the void space to be filled with epoxy is roughly 85%. I scroll down to the top of the first embedded nut recess and add a pause, and then the same for the other embedded nut. Then I print. When the print pauses, install the embedded nut. I use a small bolt to help install the nut, then resume the print and repeat for the other nut. Once the print is done, resist the urge to remove the fin off the print bed, but instead let it cool naturally for a few hours. Failure to do this will result in slight rock on the fin due to warping as it cools. You may also need to add a brim or support discs to help stop this warping depending on your printer. Then print the tuttle, ensuring the infill is still gyroid. Cut the carbon rods to size, then the 6mm stainless threaded rods. Spray the print with a couple of coats of clear coat and let dry. Don't forget the underside of the tuttle. This stops the epoxy weeping out of the pore space between layers while the epoxy cures. Assemble the fin and torque the retaining nuts reasonably tightly. Don't over tighten the nuts otherwise the tuttle will slightly expand and not fit. Drill 4mm epoxy fill holes about 1mm deep at both the front and rear of the fin and tuttle to gain access to the gyroid infill. Make a simple jig to hold the fin horizontal in a bucket of water. When epoxy cures it gets hot and can melt or warp the 3D print. Based on advice from my local epoxy supplier, anything thicker than 15mm is likely to get hot enough to approach the deformation point of the plastic. Fill the bucket a few centimetres lower than the fin flange and have additional water at hand to top it off later. Cut two syringes roughly in half. These are for reservoirs to help remove air bubbles and to compensate for any leakage. If you're using a sheet for the trailing edge, cut this to shape now but don't glue it. This is to stop the epoxy accidentally getting in the slot from any drips. I print the template on paper, then glue in place with wood glue, then cut out, then remove the paper. Place the fin horizontally in a vise with plastic jaws or other protection and install one of the syringe reservoirs. Mix up the epoxy. The stuff I use is what people make colourful resin tables and artwork out of, as my supplier said that was the stiffest epoxy they sell. You can calculate the volume of epoxy required from your CAD program. Get another syringe and start filling the fin. Don't press the syringe all the way down as this will inject air bubbles into the fin. Keep going until the epoxy comes out on the opposite reservoir. Then add the other reservoir and put a small amount of epoxy in that. Then rock the fin back and forth to remove air bubbles. 
You can do this a lot or a little depending on how patient you are. However, if you notice the fin getting hot to touch, it's time to remount the hanging jig and place in the water bath. My epoxy has a cure time of 12 hours, so the next day remove the syringes which you can reuse indefinitely. You can see here I should have put more epoxy in the reservoirs as more air was trapped than I expected. Repeat the epoxy filling process for the Tuttle. Note you may have to invert the fin in order to remove air bubbles. The Tuttle seems to be thin enough in my case not to warrant hanging in a water bath but it still reaches around 50 degrees C whilst curing. Once cured any drips can be peeled off the print as epoxy doesn't bond strongly to the PETG. I then sand, mainly focusing on the leading edge, to a 400 grit finish. I leave the remainder of the print unsanded or only roughly sanded as I'm led to believe the fin will hold better in the water this way. Apply a thin coat of clear coat. This just makes the fin look good. Then glue in the trailing edge strip. If using PETG sheet, dichloromethane is the best as this welds the strip to the print. And that's it. The fin is done. Test fit the fin. You may have to sand the tuttle if you've tightened the nuts too much. Width of the tuttle should be 15.9 millimeters. I load test the fins using a simple jig and a 20 kilogram bag of salt suspended 18 centimeters from the board. This isn't necessary but gives you peace of mind the fin isn't going to break on you and helps compare how stiff various fins are. In addition to drastically reducing the cost of making fins, the basic technique of filling 3D prints with epoxy allows other parts to be made that previously have been off limits due to lack of strength. It also allows quick prototyping cheaply and repeatedly, so stand by for more experiments. Thank you.